How would you say Berlin in German, with your German accent, like normally? I would say Berlin. Okay, and then what about if you were saying it, if you were speaking English? Berlin. Berlin, you see, there's yeah. a difference, right? <laughs> Berlin, with the emphasis on the Ber, Berlin. And then when you're speaking German, it's the emphasis on the in. Berlin, welcome to Germany. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0, the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Today I want to talk about something called renter's fog. It's kind of a smoky fog. This is a, a little known fact about Germany is that if you rent an apartment here and you leave it empty for a long time, there's a risk that the, the radiators, the, the Heizung, I think it's called, right? Heizung? Yeah. The radiators can, I won't say malfunction, but they have to release the pressure that is being built up in the system because they're not being used. And what that can introduce into the room is a kind of like this foggy, smoky mist over time. So that when I came back from Portugal last week, I had suffered a case of renter's fog. So this room, because my radiator's over here, had, yeah, it was, it was kind of, not covered, it wasn't floor to ceiling in fog, but there was enough fog in the room to be worrying. Because not only does it affect, you know, one's ability to watch TV, of course, but as we know from the videos that I made in Portugal last month and the month before, is that what's in the room can affect the sound of the loudspeakers in the room. So because I just arrived back from Portugal, I quickly unpacked my Room EQ Wizard setup. So the Umic One microphone, I put it at the listening position and connected it to my laptop. And I took a frequency response measurement with the, the renter's fog in the room. And it was pretty poor. Now, I think what's going on here is that the fog is, it's like a parasitic fog. And what it does is it, it, it kind of is drawn to anything that would behave like an aerial. So long runs of cable, even if they're shielded. So I think what was going on was that the fog was somehow getting into the cable. And because it's parasitic, it feeds on low frequencies and it was causing some fairly wild distortions in the, in the low end of my room, as the frequency response told me. Also, as I heard from the listening seat, because when I sat down to listen, I just thought this sounds really weird in the bass. So the measurement shows us, and I'll put that on the screen right now, the measurement shows us that we've got a large peak at 40 hertz and another large peak at 140 hertz. And I thought, no, that's not good. I'm gonna to have to somehow get rid of this fog. So I had to ask myself, what can I do to solve this renter's fog problem in my apartment? Now, I knew very fortunately that I had the emergency kit on hand. I have a box of AudioQuest fog lifters they were stored over there, now they're on the speaker over, over there behind me. And you have to build them. And then you place them under your loudspeaker cables. It stops RMI and EFI getting into the cable and messing with the electrical signal in the cable. And I'm calling bullshit on that. Because as we all know, the fog lifters are really designed specifically for the German market, specifically to tackle this problem of renter's fog. So what I did, with gritted teeth and determination was I built each fog lifter and I put each one under a certain section of my loudspeaker cable, also made by AudioQuest. And I placed them at kind of strategic intervals to effectively elevate most, but not all, of my loudspeaker cable off the floor. Now, of course, I could just drape the speaker cable over the back of my Kallax unit, but I didn't do that. I wanted to use the proper bona fide solution. So once I got the fog lifters under the cable and supporting the cable, I knew I had a better chance of solving this problem because 
the fog is most parasitic, most pernicious with the cable on the floor because close to the floor is where the, the renter's fog is, is at its densest and is most likely to kind of enter the cable. So by lifting it off the floor, even by you know, a matter of inches, it really helps, I guess, reduce the, the attraction so that the fog doesn't really know where the cable is anymore because you've lifted it off the floor. So the idea is that the fog lifters, when in place, confuse the fog, the fog can't find the cable as easily, and then slowly, I guess, recedes, really. So I put the fog lifters under my speaker cables and I waited. The fog's still there and the radiator's still, I don't know, dissatisfied and possessed and... But I had to wait a good couple of hours and slowly but surely, the fog began to recede to move away, to dissipate, because it couldn't find the cable anymore. And once the fog had completely gone, what I did is I took another frequency response measurement to make sure that it was no longer affecting my cables, that there was no residual fog inside the cable, because that can happen. And sometimes you have to shake the cable pretty violently to get it out. So I, I had to do a little bit of that, but yeah, I took another frequency response measurement and found that, yes, the 140 hertz bump had gone, as had the 40 hertz bump. I had a much smoother response from the Klipsch loudspeakers, the Forte 4 that you see behind me. So I thought that was a real win for me. So AudioQuest's fog lifters don't believe the marketing hype on their website. They quite clearly blow away the fog. They destroy it. So it allows us to hear in Germany, when we rent after we've left our apartment empty for some months, it allows us to hear our hi-fi system at its most musical, without the veil being in front of it, quite literally the, the fog veil in front of it. And we once again get inky black backgrounds and we get treble as sweet as a condensed milk sandwich. And I think it's fair to say that AudioQuest's fog lifters compete with similar products selling for two or three times the price. I know it's insane, but it's true. It's, it is, it, yeah. it's obviously, yeah. you know, I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is really, this is, this is real for me. I mean, this whole renter's fog problem in Germany, I didn't, I mean, Olaf had told me about it a couple of years ago. He's like, well, if you're gonna go to Portugal, you gotta watch out for renter's fog. Yeah, I'm like, what? in the winter. In the, in the winter, right, yeah, because the heating system is activated in the winter. They turn it off during the summer. And I thought, no, it's not gonna to happen to me. I'm living in a modern building, but sure enough, I came back from Portugal, I had renter's fog. Like if, you, if I owned this apartment, I wouldn't get renter's fog, right? No, no, not at all. Anyway, if you liked this video, if you thought it was informative or entertaining or a bit of both, then please consider giving us a like down below. If you like my attitude to solving problems from the left field with products also from the left field, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Renters fog. <laughs> Sorry, I lost it. Yeah. Like, what? That was a long time there. Three minutes, I made it without laughing, right? <laughs> three minutes, hang on a sec, I gotta. Is anymore because you've lifted it off the floor. So, <laughs> I can see you laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Poor fog. <laughs>